This is an Orion Observer 70mm ALT-S mounted refractor telescope, and today we're going to review it. You know I get a lot of messages about this stuff at the bottom of the Orion catalog, and I have to confess, I don't spend a lot of time looking at that stuff. I find this low-grade, lower-cost material tends to border on that department store grade junk scope territory that we're always warning people against. But let's go ahead and take a look at this, and we'll go ahead and review it anyway. So you know, when I was looking through my catalogs, I have a stack of Orion catalogs about a foot high. And there's a couple of very interesting things about this model. First of all, this could be the longest lived telescope in Orion's catalog. Now, if it isn't, it's pretty darn close. I didn't check every model. But this model goes all the way back to the late 1990s. And it's been a continuous production since, and it's still available today. A couple of very interesting things about this. Number one, that it is so old and it has been a continuous production, and I barely knew this thing. But the second thing to note is the price. Back in 1999, $199 for the Altaz version, and the Equatorial version was a little bit more. Fast forward to 2009, and the price had dropped to $139. Ten years of inflation, and it went from $199 to $139. It gets even stranger. In the 2014 catalog, it had dropped another $10 to $129. And as of today, the last time I checked, it's mid-2022, and after another eight years of inflation, and we've got some fairly serious inflation going right on right now as I'm filming this thing, the price had gone down to $109? You can buy this thing for $109 today? And today, they're giving you the Easy Finder 2 Red Dot Finder as opposed to the 6x30 Finder. And today, you're getting the 25mm and the 10mm Explorer 2 eyepieces. Back in 1999, they were only giving you the 25mm eyepiece. So, this is a gravity-defying, inflation-defying piece of equipment. And in fact, if you're astute, you may notice that the price of the Finder alone that they sell here is about $40. The two eyepieces are about $30 a piece, so you add that up, it's $100 worth of accessories alone just in those, and you're pretty much getting the telescope for free. So now I can hear this. Some of you have probably turned off the video and you're hurrying over to the Orion website to buy one of these things before the price goes up. But you know, ho hold on a second. Pay attention to the next few minutes before you do that, and if you want to go ahead and buy it afterwards, that's fine, but please do watch the rest of the review. Let's get this up on the mount and talk it over. So here we are outside with the Orion Observer 70 Altaz Refractor Telescope. So how does it perform? Well, <laughs> it's not that great. We have to break this up into two parts here. The optical tube is actually fair to passable. It's not great. There's chromatic aberration, there's spherical aberration, there's some astigmatism ground into the optics. Can we forgive that at this price point? I think we probably can. So this 45 degree erect image diagonal isn't great. It's usually not a good sign. They're trying to appeal to all different kinds of people, including terrestrial observers, but I don't know if you're going to be doing any serious birding with this thing. The optics aren't really great, but the real problem here is the mount. This is not exclusive to this product. Many inexpensive telescopes in this price range have bad mounts, and this one is no exception. It does go left and right and up and down, and it seems smooth in this video, but you can see there's some backlash in it, and it's not really steady. It doesn't really hold still. There's a very general rule of thumb. Whenever you see one of these yoke-mounted telescopes that are inexpensive and have this bar across the side here, it's usually chrome steel, but I've seen it made of other materials as well, that's usually a bad sign. So the idea here is pretty simple. If you're pointed at something you need, and you need to track, this is, there's a knob here that can help you track, but it only does it in one axis. You've still got to push it along the other axis. It isn't very precise. It view jiggles quite a bit. Uh, it just doesn't work all that well. Another thing about that is it's supposed to be for tracking, but one of the other hidden reasons they do this is because they know the mount is so sloppy and imprecise. This thing is here just as a mechanical brace as well. So again, you know, I, I tried to use this thing. I found M13, the globular cluster. It was not fun. I found Mizar and Alcor in the Big Dipper, and then I just kind of got tired of the whole thing. 
So if you really wanted to, you could take this optical tube off and put it on a better mount, and that's in fact what I did. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, but I have had people say, could you please show that process? Because I've done this before with other telescopes and they wanna see the process. So I'll go ahead and do that, but this one's pretty simple. What you do here is you remove these two screws that hold on the optical tube, and then the bar comes out like this, and I'll show you how it goes on the plate. Okay, so now we have the optical tube off the mount, and I do wanna stress here that every time you do something like this, you wind up reinventing the wheel, largely because these rings and these plates, you know, there is no standardization here, and especially with these Vixen compatible plates. I mean, this one I have is from AstroTech. I wish they still made these, it's a giant slotted hole in the middle there that you can use uh, a variety of hardware on. But I just happen to have these rings and I got them from Orion. I'm not even sure how I got these or when I got them, but they do happen to fit this optical tube. So you can do this on one ring, do this on the second ring here. And then hopefully these rings will be close enough that you can turn this over. You'll notice I've taken the finder and the diagonal off, but I left that rod on there. I just didn't feel like doing it, but these are some threaded metric screws here. And these will go right into the plate like this. So when you do this, and you tighten these down, you're good to go. So now we have this on a Vixen compatible plate. This is a industry standard. This will now go on many or almost all small to mid-size equatorial mounts. We have liberated it from that really bad Altaz mount and we can use it to see how it performs optically, you know, in a more objective fashion. Okay, so now that we have the optical tube on the plate, I have a couple of mounts here. This is a Vixen Porta. It's an Alt as manual mount. I have my Celestron AVX here, which is a computerized mount. So you can do whatever you like. This Vixen plate, again, is universal. You can just put it on here like this, and you can just use the scope. This is a much more sturdy mount. Now, I do believe this product is discontinued. You may be able to find one new old stock or used. Expect to pay three to $500 or so. Now, if you wanted to put it on the computerized mount, you can do this. And once you get it on this mount, you have the full benefit of tracking and go to and all of the fancy electronic features. Are you likely to do this? Probably not. Three to five hundred dollars for one of these, over a thousand dollars for a mount like this. But once I did this, things got a lot easier and a lot less frustrating. I found M13, the Great Globular and Hercules, other globular clusters I saw, including M3 and M5. Uh, Mizar and Alcor were split. I, it would not, however, split the double-double in Lyra, nor would it split Izar, that's Epsilon Booties, nor would I expect it to at this price range. Did stuff look great? No, but again, at this price range, just being able to see things is a victory in itself. What about astrophotography? You're kidding, right? No, don't do astrophotography with this thing. The optics aren't good. It's just gonna be a big headache for you. But, uh, you know, I did try to take a picture of the moon. The moon is slightly less maddening or a little bit easier to take images of. And I did manage to get this image of the full moon one night. This is a composite stitch of four images through Photoshop through my planetary imager from ZWO. Okay, so in the Orion catalog, try not to go below this model here. You've seen this thing here before. It's the four and a half inch Star Blast. You used to be able to find this thing for under $200. Lately, it's creeping up towards $300. Still a good bargain, still one of the best beginner telescopes that you can buy. Now, by the time you see this, this may not be available through Orion any longer, but at least for now, it does live on as the Zumel Z114. It may also be available under different nameplates and model numbers, depending on where in the world you happen to live. Just look up a 114 millimeter F4 tabletop Dobsonian reflector. 
Okay, so do I recommend this telescope? Yeah, boy, <laughs> this is tough. Okay, so let me tell you what the problem is. A lot of this low cost stuff that's aimed at beginners winds up being the most frustrating to beginners. <laughs> they just can't put enough cost into this thing to make it to the point where it's usable. And the problem is when beginners don't have early success, they have a tendency to get frustrated. And when they get frustrated, sometimes they leave the hobby and then they don't come back. And I don't wanna see that. Ironically, a product like this is actually better for an advanced amateur astronomer who knows how to get around the quirks of this thing and who have a lot more equipment that they can surround it with to make it work. Okay, so I have a feeling that no matter what I've said over these past few minutes, some of you are gonna wind up buying this thing anyway. I have a feeling I might have sold some of these for Orion, and I have mixed feelings about that. So if that's you, that's okay. Just promise me this, if you find yourself getting frustrated, especially when it comes to the mount, find somebody who has done this before, find an astronomy club, find somebody who has some experience with equipment like this and have them walk you through it so that you don't get too frustrated and that you don't wind up leaving the hobby. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.